English with 365 Kona, and today we are here with Eric Simulis Hello. From 365 Hawaii, and you guys might know him from other things we've done. He also has his real estate license, and this is Lance Owens, and he is with Luba Real Estate Kona Home Team, and he actually built this house that we're here with right now, and he has extensive research in not only building housing, but also helping people uh, choose homes that might need some renovation, and so he's actually knows a lot of the information we're going to talk about today as we are talking about the realities of building and renovating a home on the Big Island of Hawaii. So let's start with the concept of buying land. So Lance, can you give us right now in uh, September of 2020, what's happening with the land market and what are you seeing with people who want to actually come to this island and buy land to build? Right now what we're seeing is a lot of people with the, um, the land prices have gone up quite a bit like everything else. So it's kind of it's I don't think you're not going to save money or make money to do that at this point right now in the market because um, the building costs are so expensive and the land so expensive but what you are going to get is what you want so I think that's that's a trade-off but to come here and build and you know it, it depends on how much the market goes up and, and what happens from here but at this point with the cost of things you're going to be into pretty much the same except for you're going to have the waiting time but but also you get a new home though you got a new home. You know what I mean? That's one thing that, you know, yeah. if you buy ones that are existing, you the sooner they're going to have to do something. And even one that's five years old might require maintenance here. Yeah. So it, there are, it, if it's an even, it's it, it's not a negative to, to buy one. Correct. But there are right. other negatives, right. which we'll get right. into. Right. <laughs> so, okay, so just so people know, the cost of, of land on West Hawaii is a lot more expensive than buying land on the east side Correct. of the island. Yeah. So I've been getting people who are trying to purposely buy over on the east side because they're trying to look for the deal on the land. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to say anything. Let me, you say it. When you buy in a place that's less expensive for land, let's say like Mountain View or Fern Acres, what are you there, dealing there's with? There's always the trade-off, you know. There's there's the first of all, the, what you want to look at is the lava zone. You know, what is the lava zone? You know, a lot of areas over there, are lava zone two, uh, summer one, and summer three and four. And uh, just to give you a reference point, you know, Kona is a lava zone four, and a lot of areas on the other side of the island are lava zone two, summer one. Um, you get down the coast farther, they get up to three, four, and even eight when you get to Hamakua. Mm -hmm. But then the prices, that's where the prices shoot up to. Mm -hmm. So a big thing, and the second thing to think about is, is uh, municipal utilities. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're buying in Kona, a lot of times you're on county water and you're on your electric and things like that. And you're buying all these other areas. And this isn't a bad thing, it's, not, it's, it's kind of cool being on water catchment and not paying a water bill and that means you're not paying a sewer bill and you're not paying a lot of bills you're just catching the water and they get enough rain there um i know we got some listings over on that side right now and it's um some of the, a lot of the areas are 200 inches rain a year 150 inches rain a year so that's a lot <laughs> hey it's been raining that way over here too you know? yeah, yeah. yeah this year's been yeah. raining here yeah. yeah. too so you yeah. can't totally so say people say so. an area of this island is wet believe them that yeah, usually means yeah. it's very wet. Yeah, like yeah. tropical forest wet. Right? Yeah. Kind of totally. And I'm just, you can't see our view. Maybe we'll swing over there later. But I'm at 1,800 foot elevation and down the hill from me, just, you know, five miles, three miles down the hill, their rain is, is 30 to 40 inches of rain and I'm 50 to 60 inches of rain just being okay. right up the hill. Yeah. 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 That's something So, yeah. So, so, so. Um, but uh, in terms of <clears throat> unsavory characters, that's something you got to yes. watch out for too you know it's just like anything it's um it's and um, you know we got to be careful because i can just tell you look at the police blotters look at things look what happened a lot of things that i see happen on the big island it seems to um i just gotta leave it there you gotta look at the you gotta look at the, <laughs> the police logs and things like that it's crazy they call it steering if i try to point you in one direction or the right. other so i just try okay to so since i'm not a licensed agent i just want you guys to know that you get exactly what you pay for on this island right mm -hmm. so if you um are trying to save money you might find yourself in spaces where there might be more instances of crime or some trouble and when people because i get these questions can't I just buy a little sliver of land in West Hawaii and put my tiny house on it and homestead? No. <laughs> it just doesn't work that way. The zoning yeah. laws are so that you cannot cut up little pieces of land and put your tiny home on it yeah. and grow a couple fruit trees. Well, and correct me if I'm wrong, even trying to putting a, a, a tiny house on a regular lot is, yeah. is tricky on top of that. Right. So it, tell it, a little bit about what's like even on this. So this is Coloco that we're in right now. You have to buy five acres or an acre lot, right? Um, yeah, most like most of it's it up here is three to twenty acres. Most of it, and because we're in a rainforest zone up here, um, 
if you're you're only allowed I'm on an older lot that was split up before the rules came in but if you go up the hill a mile they're on a restriction where they can only develop 20 percent of the land and they have to buy 10 acres and so most of them are 10 acres and above yeah. and so you can clear two acres of it which isn't that bad and the prices aren't that bad you can pick up a 10 acre parcel up there for 400 450 mm -hmm. and uh it's 10 acres in hawaii and in, in a great location you know most of the homes um in the area not all homes but they but a good majority of the sales up here are, are anywhere from 900 to 2 million, you know? So um, to pick up 10 acres for 400 to 450 is not a bad deal. Okay, okay. But then you got, if it's, if it's raw land, there's a lot of lava up here though too. Yeah. Because we tried this before. Um, then, um, mostly around Kona, correct me if I'm wrong, the cost of an acre of land around Kona is running at least $200,000? An acre is running you know, close to two hundred fifty to three hundred. Okay. Um, depending on that, there's not a lot to choose. There's one a couple at that price point. So. Yeah. So, yeah. and then there's there's some like like home lots, like in some of the subdivisions that are open right now, right? Yeah, but everything's up over two hundred. There's hardly anything under that. Yeah. So you if know? you think you're gonna buy land and you're gonna buy cheap land and to put a less expensive yeah. house on it, it's yeah. not really happening, right? So then why don't we go into what the actual the building is now that we've come okay. to the cost Okay, so knowing that the cost of land is that high, let's talk a little bit about what it's going to take to build. So um, let's start with, um, you know, okay, not trying to like be inexpensive. Let's just say your average home build. What do you think? Let's say your average house. Let's say a three bedroom, two bath house. Let's talk about like a 1,500 square foot house. You pro you, you're looking at, I think, probably 175 a square foot. Okay. We're at about two hundred dollars a square foot with what we built. We're not. We didn't go super high end, but we went with nice finishes. You know, I. But and, and just just pointing out, I think if you're going to build your own house, you, I mean, to do something cheap probably wouldn't be be worth it at the end of the day. You right. Might, you right. might want to just get something that's pre-built at that point. You know. Yeah. I mean, it just sort of separates. You should probably build something you like and is nice. Right, right. Yeah. And if you have all the money in the world, I love you. That's fantastic. We got some land for you to build. Uh, but if you have really seriously, if you got some, you, know, you really, you're coming with with means. Um, another reason we wanted to talk to you guys about this is because understanding sometimes once you buy the land, that's only the beginning of it. Then there's the permitting, and then there's the getting the um, the people, like the tradesmen and the uh, contractors. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? So, and that's one of the big things too. And another thing is getting your septic system and you've got to get um, all the permits for that. Uh, you're not going to find any of these vacant lots that are going to be hooked to the sewer in any place. They're all going to be on septic. So you're going to have to create that. And that's, that runs a cost of about uh, 15 grand, I think is, is about the average cost. Yeah. That's with everything. And that's with digging the hole and putting in the septic tank and getting the permits. And of course they got to check the, the um, percolation of the ground and things like that. Of course, it's all the same here. You know. <laughs> no, nobody Lava. came on my lot. Well, no, we checked the neighbor's lot the other day. You know, it's like, not the other day, but you know, they, they know the areas, and it is um, you do so those you know those kind of costs like say about fifteen grand there, mm -hmm. and then uh, the permitting office. My wife and I, we kind of we had done a, a custom home on Oahu, and not not fancy custom home, and we just decided to draw it ourselves and do everything and. Um, had to go back and forth to the draftsman because at that time in my life I was painting boats and airplanes so I compartmentalized everything thinking I'm gonna have this little home and it's gonna be great I was tricked stuff and the guy's like no you're costing yourself a lot more money so by the time I went conventional and it, with plans and things like that and, and drew it out and got everything done we just decided this time you know what we've got these package homes um, HPM and a couple other companies have package homes here Let's just take one of those and modify it. So um, we did that and we're, to do it again, we're gonna go back and do it ourselves. We're not gonna do that. <laughs> a lot of things that I thought they've made this home, uh, you know, 500 times, maybe, I don't know, 300 times. I don't know how many times they've made this home. They would have certain things figured out and we wouldn't have to think about that. And that wasn't the case. So, um, so good, good insight on that. Yeah. And so HPM, it's, yeah. Uh, what does it stand for? Um, Hawaiian oh, something. Yeah. Okay. Know, it's HBM. So basically, yeah, HBM. Um, it's not Lowe's and it's not Home Depot. It is it kind of a like that, company. but it's a local company. Yeah. And they have about like, I don't know, 14, 15 styles of homes that you can choose from. Mm -hmm. They are yeah, not home. manufactured homes, however. No. Mm -hmm. They basically give you the plan and you buy the plan 
right? And, they, it, and they help you get through the permitting process pretty quickly, yeah. right? And yeah. then they um, sell you all the pieces at HPM. So they, they yeah. did, but just a little side note, I heard that they were talking about actually putting pre-manufactured, doing pre-manufactured. Yeah, the so they're trying to do that. And they, and they trying. so they're, they're beating that right now by building walls and building things. So like all of our trusses came, that was a nice thing. Mm -hmm. They made all the trusses in Hilo at their, at their factory, which you, they don't call it factory. <laughs> but um, so they made the trusses over there and they did offer a package where they could have built all the walls and shipped them over. Mm. I, my wife and I, because we're in the business, we were trying to save as much money as we could and we were trying to do as much of it as we could ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, but we went to the builder and said, hey, we can save some money, I think, doing this. And he actually said, no, you can't. Mm. I can build it on site for you less than they can get it and I get it done now. You can be waiting, that's going to put us off a month. So uh, your cost of money and the cost of time and things like that is not worth maybe dollar for dollar. That might have been a little bit less, but but when you add up the whole package, it wasn't. There you go. So, okay. But having the trusses made in the in the complicated things, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, okay. was good. So Eric Zimons. Well, it sounds like we should move on to labor now. I mean, yeah. we kind of got the basic. <laughs> and wait, wait, before we get off materials and, and get it, uh, we should also talk about... Uh, where we are, uh, I mean, we all have to always have to remember that we live on an island and everything gets shipped here. So trying to get things here is always tricky, whether it be general materials or, or other materials. And there are times that things run out of materials or and there's a cost for materials, too. So that that drives that two hundred dollars a, 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 a square foot up is you know also getting these things right. like specialty and, flooring well then specialty you into, appliances if you, yeah if you start picking out special things and everything has to be ordered from the mainland you could be talking at a long time a, a long a lot of extra time as, as well because you're shipping yeah right? yeah well real quick on that too you know we ordered our our whole appliance package off of costco.com right with that well that's great that's a great price costco.com will get it handled and um they said it'll be delivered here in 30 days um, <laughs> How long did it take? 9,500 days later. It had it. <laughs> okay. But but it got worse than that. Actually, I was lucky that it took that long because we ordered it early on. And uh, when it did get here, it's... Um, that was a whole nightmare. I got a whole blog on that. But <laughs> but it, when it did get here and get, and get delivered, um, we still were a couple of months away from installing everything anyways. You know, I was trying to coordinate it. So it worked out okay. It wasn't... If you were home was done and you ordered it, that would that you'd be in trouble. Um, but if with what we did and the problems we had, and then it sat here for two months afterwards, and we finally got it installed, and we had a problem with it. Um, I called up Samsung, and it took Samsung two weeks to get back to me. By the time all that happened, I was 92 days into my purchase. And Costco would not take it back in 92 days of my delivery. Oh, because it was only yeah. like 90 days. You got right? 90 days oh. on appliances to return them or do anything with them. It was 92 days. I had called Samsung and reported it two weeks prior. I sent my phone records to them. I sent everything to Costco. I went up the chain through 10 different people and was denied, 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 denied. Um, I finally got it. I wrote a blog yep. about my experience. <laughs> I put my blog on Facebook and then I promoted it in Kirkland, Washington. <laughs> Where um, there's other cars. I spent hundred bucks and I woke up the next morning and it was refunded. <laughs> Sometimes you have to get so, clever. Yeah, yeah. So you yeah. got to get clever to get things so, done. Uh, but also, I, I think that goes to a little bit bigger. Sometimes, it, you know, picking a specialty item that is so unique to the island that it, there's no uh, example. We had a refrigerator that went bad and. Um, Samsung, right? No, it was a uh, Whirlpool. Was yeah, it? it was a type of Whirlpool, but there was no Whirlpool. It was under warranty, but there was no Whirlpool. And just so you guys it. know, that there's no repair people here. That's the yeah. problem. That's so, the problem. So, yeah. so the downfall is when picking items out, just be careful of that yeah. Yeah. So with, with doing that. Yeah. But, and also remember that things could take a really long time. So you, you're kind of banking that everything's going to go well. But, you know, we were talking in our last video, but, you know, that there's there's a shipping company that um, is shipping a lot less these days. Um, uh, Young Brothers is, is, is not quite doing as much business as they used to. So getting things to the island could be delayed by a lot, by, yeah. you know, it could go an extra month, you know, without right. even thinking about it. And the price could go up because of the fact that that's the price coming, they're bringing yeah. the prices yeah. up. Yeah. Um, but real quick, just so you guys have a little extra fun tip. If you are considering buying a house here and putting in appliances, um, if you're living anywhere near the ocean, they will go out on you. 
So yeah. get an extended warranty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So we, we had we had sure. all of our appliances died in four years. <laughs> right. <laughs> everything, the refrigerator, the oven, everything. And we moved into a home last June um, with all brand new appliances, and we had to replace the refrigerator three months ago. Yeah, but and anyways, so but this is more about, this, let's try to stay on the bigger topic. Yeah, but, you know, the, but the little ones with the appliances, you can spend thousands of dollars on appliances. We spent $5,500 on our appliance package. Okay. So, and, then, and Samsung, good, I think it's a good product. I was, I'm in the business, it's, I, I see lots of homes that don't have problems with it, and I didn't realize there's no Samsung guy on the island. The two weeks that Samsung took to get back to me, the final straw, their final answer was, cut off the cord, scrape off the serial number and then take a picture of it and uh, we will send you a check for $2,200 to pay for that. So yeah. that's our answer. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens. Okay. Yeah. So, um, back on track, back on track. So labor. So we have an issue with good people on this island. So uh, I, I have a, just sort of a basic uh, understanding of how labor works here. Just, a, it's just kind of a concept, uh, figure the top 25% that are contractors are busy beyond belief and you can't get them. Okay. And then, well, I could say the third. So that's the top third. And then the, the middle third is okay. You could get them. You sometimes get them. You might not. They might do a good job. They might not. And then there's a, a, the bottom third, which you probably wouldn't want to work on or are going to have problems with it. But there's such a lack of people on there that they get jobs no matter what. Right. So it kind of gives you an idea of where we're at here in Hawaii. And right now, because there's a lot of people that are buying land and there are a lot of people that are building and things are going well, trying to get contractors to work is definitely difficult. Right, so if you get somebody who wants to work with you for less than what other people are charging, um, they might not be um, licensed, they might be new to the position, and since we don't really have a really good active bidder business bureau, um, you might want to check Yelp and just do a little bit more research in terms of who you're hiring. So and just to just put things in perspective, what we do at our uh, the association is that we check everybody's licenses to make sure they're current, because yeah. that makes a big difference if they're a real company. If they're not a real company, they probably, they say they might have a license, they might have had a license in the past, but they're not they're not legitimate. They let it go. Yeah, and it then also check to make sure that they are actually insured too. Those are the two things that really make a, a will the, the good people have to be. The the ones that are not don't want to pay that extra $300 a month to do those kinds references, of things. References, references, references. And references yeah. on top yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah. So don't, don't, if you're coming from the mainland and you think you're just going to hire somebody off the internet, just be very careful and, because and it costs a lot of money. I'll just say that there are times when I only have two people to choose from. <laughs> and yeah. that's it. You know what I mean? And if I piss the one guy off, then I got one person. And I might make it and I might not. And if I don't like him. Yeah. So yeah. just, it's it's a different world. You know what I mean? I have a friend who lived on a wall who said he could get anything done. You know, he had 15 people that show up in two yeah. days. Yeah. But, you know, the guy I talked to might might show up and take a look in two weeks. You know what I mean? That's as close yeah. as you yeah. might yeah. get. Yeah. Oh, speaking I, of that, permit. Okay. Big thing, too, is that I see all the time, you know, a lot of people coming in from the mainland. And my clients are expecting to get three estimates for everything they want done. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I can't find three people to do the job, let alone they'll just come give us an estimate. Sure. So you got to kind of go off with, um, you know, if you've got a good realtor, um, you know, have, I mean, use somebody that they've used and that they that they trust. Right. And you're going to, you know, there's nobody giving bargains. You know, yeah, it's right not now. bargains and it will be slow at yeah. the end of the day. These are not guys that are going to say, I'll be there in a week. I mean, they're saying I'm booked out three months out. Yeah. I'll get to you when I get to the end of my projects. Yeah. You know? Okay, we're not trying to be bum you out, guys. No, no, right. This, this this is, reality. This, I, I think yeah. this is about it's life is different on an island. It that's is, just, yeah. It, it's it's called it. island life, you know, island time. And again, um, because of everything that's happened, um, the good guys have been kept busy through all this time. Like Dickinson Construction, they're on it, they're on it, yeah. they're on it. Yeah. Um, but then the people that um, do bad jobs think that new people coming in don't do the research they need to do, and so they can keep doing bad jobs. So we're just telling you guys to be diligent yeah. about checking these people out. Um, okay, so we've got material, we've got labor, uh, permitting. Permitting is another process, and that was kind of one of the benefits of, of choosing that package home. And again, our package home, it, it, it's we've got a 2,200 square foot home, and we've got a um, three-car garage. So, uh, you know, it's, it's to give you some sense of what it is, you know, we've okay. got three bedrooms, an office, um, and then we've got one, two, three and a half baths. So, because we got one in the garage, the three car garage, we separated from the house. Um, so permitting process, so they pulled the permits for us and that was an advantage to having this package home that we got. Um, the Malohia is the one we chose and that's 1900 feet on their website. We pushed it out, we jacked it up. The wall plates just going up to nine feet 
is priceless, you guys. You never think you're in a you're <laughs> in a in a cus or in a in a package. So home, wait, a little, little side note. We went to a house. A friend of ours had a house. They had ten foot ceilings. So oh and, yeah. And it was kind of like whoa. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's, I guess. Anyway, so. you guys in the mainland probably are used to this. But yeah, out here, it's, it's, it's a different area. Yeah. Why would you have ten foot ceilings? We're in a small we're in a small place and don't have these very often. Yeah. So. Anyways, yeah. go on. <laughs> so, but it was just nice. They pulled all the permits. They knew all the people at the permit office. Well, and, and oh, oh, oh. it was just modified plan, so it went right through. And so, one of the things they're working on the permitting here is that you have to get separate permits that all have to go separately through. So, you've got different, uh, you've got different electrical permits, and you've got different plumbing permits, and the other building Septic permits. permits. They're yeah. all separate, and they're trying to turn them into. And I were just we we're just hearing them recently on the news yeah. that they're trying to make it all one package, so you can get all of it done at the same time instead of having to go to each different permitting section to get that done yeah. which of course does slow it down and and you know and of course bureaucracy here is slow as well so nothing moves quickly through the permit process totally. on top of that yeah. yeah yeah okay so um in terms of uh having your bright-eyed ideas about how you're gonna get out here and do these things um do you have like little last-minute tips about people who um so getting an architect or getting you know like when people say I want to buy land and I want to get started, any tips on like what's the best way to make that happen? Who should they deal with first? We, some of the big things is you got to remember um, a lot of areas don't have internet, mm. you know, and they don't have sewer systems. That's pretty much given there. But but the big things I've seen people get get frustrated about after a purchase or or into the purchase is finding out that the um, they didn't know that they had to bring in five poles to bring in the power at five grand a pole. And then they had to put a five thousand dollar transformer in to get you know to, to, Once it gets there, to yeah. bump the power up to make that run. So make sure you're clear on the utilities that are available at the corner of the lot. What's on the parcel? And if it's not there, how far away is it, and what's the cost to get it there? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you, well, okay, well, we could even go on with that. And now you're talking about what it's going to take to get it. If, if if you're raw land without a driveway or anything like that. Yeah. If you're going to put a driveway in, are we having to dig up lava rocks? You know what I mean? Let's just remember that most things here have lava rocks in them. That's the nature <laughs> most of Most things do. <laughs> yeah. And, so, and they, so I'll give you an example. They're, they were, uh, now they're getting away from it. It used to be post and pier here at, in Hawaii that everything was on a post and put a pier and it was fairly simple to build on a hillside. Now they're primarily wanting a cinder block foundation and or a flat, flat slab, which means that you have to remove or flatten a whole bunch of lava rocks, which is, means you take a big fat tractor with a big fat jackhammer and you should there and you jackhammer for days. I mean, yeah. they went. They happened next to us in our house. Yeah, and then a Safeway did it. There's a putting in a new Safeway downtown, and I think they did it for what is a year. <laughs> they, they literally oh, broke rocks crazy. for a year. You know what I mean? And they had ten tractors break, breaking rocks. It was just amazing. So that, but the cost of it definitely adds up quickly too. And it's one of those things that you're thinking, well, if I got the land, how hard should it be to put something? But it might take some effort, and putting the driveway in might be a big deal as well. So, so you to. To reflect on that, so we bought three acres, and and we know it's about ten thousand dollars an acre to to just do basic clearing and, and ten thousand dollars an acre. Ten thousand acre. That's a very loose figure. So we got three acres. And it's like okay, we'll do that, right? But it was it turned out it's all blue rock, which is the hardest oh, the rock to get. And um, we wanted some. I wanted to be able to drive the whole property, so I really wanted the whole property worked. I wanted to be able to get my side by side. I've got a hundred feet elevation within the three change within the three acres. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we wanted a horse arena. So by the time we were done making a 120 and 120 flat area on the side of a mountain that went like this, we were into our grading a hundred thousand dollars. Whoa! Yeah. yeah. Wow. So yeah, and so and then, well, and then all the other thing that people would do is that they could do rock walls, and that's another way of doing it. You it's do another it. hundred grand. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, it's that's expensive. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or just pointing out all the things that you should keep your eyes over. So, yeah. example, you know, if you want to make a flat building foundation, you're going to need a rock wall in it to keep the stuff yeah. from falling, and then the rock walls are are you know are exorbitantly expensive. It gives a lot of labor. Yeah. So but hopefully uh, they can pull the rocks right off your own right. Property. And also, um, let's talk about because one of my friends who moved here um, really wants to get a house with a pool and she said maybe I'll just build one mm -hmm. um, can you give us a little bit of experience about what you guys have seen with the pool experience I I've seen quotes for a small pool at 60 grand and then uh, you know depending on all the way up 
Uh, it's nothing to be into an 80 or 90 or 100. Yeah, I've, I've heard that as well. Yeah. And it just and let's, I mean, the question is, why is it so expensive? And just the material alone, I heard just the rebar was, a, was a, I forgot what it was, $10,000 more rebar or more than that, just for that. Just There's so much steel, and remember, it all has to get shipped in. It's not here. I'll put on a boat. Yeah, and, and then now you're talking about how many pool pool installers do we have in the island. And again, I can count them on one hand, I think. You know what I mean? <laughs> Three, yeah. So now you're talking about, and you know, now you're competing against somebody else You know, who's got it. So, so these guys are always busy. And just to put things in perspective, we had to have our pool at our, our condo association refinished. Uh, and so they went in and they ground down the entire pool. And uh, I, everybody, when COVID hit, everybody called the pool guy up and said, can you work on my pool? So it took me four and a half months before I guys could do a simple day job, job, job to get in there and do it. So yeah. it just, it just puts yeah. things in perspective where it at. And that's where we are with pools. You know what I mean? So the idea of it wouldn't be romantic to have a great pool in there. Well, you're going to pay for it. And now let's also just, I'm just going to go a little bit farther. It's a little bit not quite in building. But now ma maintaining your pool, because I end up doing that, and I, I, is one of those things. And, you know, it has to be clean. You're going to have to buy, you know, chlorine. You're going to have to buy chemicals that are all shipped in. Uh, we use uh, salt water uh, um, chlorinators, which, which work out well, but they still don't last forever and they cost money. And it, it's, so I'm just saying there's a, a cost of doing that also. And I bet it's a lot. I don't know what it does on the mainland, but it is fairly substantial here to do something like that. So something, something to think about. But... Yeah, you I know what going to say. Right there. <laughs> Go swimming in the ocean. ocean right and the there. ocean is great. You never have to worry about it. And it's yeah. always between 70, what, 2 and 85. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? It's always a nice Because that's another thing, too, that uh, the cost of heating a pool is oh, expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then your solar system to put on your roof is not mm. cheap, right? Evaporation rates, you know, because it's. And it's hot year year round, and the water and the cost of water. You, you, most of the time, if you're not on catchment, you're going to have to go through city water. And didn't they just bump county up water. county yeah. water? And they just bumped up the cost of county water by ten percent. Yeah, by another ten percent, and yeah. it's and it wasn't cheap to begin with. So the point is, whatever the cost. In other words, on the mainly, you, you don't consider utilities that much. You don't consider what it costs to do things. Uh, and even like, you know, we go back to food here, all of the items that you just don't even think about on the mainland, where they are, you think, whoa, you know what I mean? And it takes up a lot more. So it, it sort of whittles down your, uh, if you think you've got, you know, you know, 10,000 a month to spend and now you're spending, you know, 20, 30% more than you would on the mainland, it'll go pretty quick is what I, we're saying. So yeah. just be aware of that. Living a normal life takes a lot more effort over here. So you better you know, uh, put that in your perspective. It's worth every seven, moment. Yeah, yeah. It's it's every, 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 well, you're paying seven dollars for a loaf of bread. You know, the paradise tax. Right? We call it the paradise tax. Right, yeah, right, right. Five dollar, five dollars for a gallon of milk. A dollar a year for corn. Five dollars. Are we talking? About, I paid seven bucks for a, ga <laughs> oh, for a gallon of milk last time. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think whether people, so people are asking these questions. Well, once you get, you want to do renovations? Then we're oh, doing? yeah, renovations real quick. So um, a lot of the housing stock on this island are older. And if it's in a climate experience, it's getting beaten by the climate. So if you're near the ocean, you're getting beaten by the sand, I mean, the salt. If you're up in, like, let's say Mountain View, Fern Acres, the run of rain they get is amazing. Um, same thing with Hilo. They get a lot of rain, so you get a lot of rust. Um, so, um, and rot. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to find an existing structure, um, you're probably going to have to put some money into making it happen when you get in there. So, um, renovations. So you guys were talking again about the trades people aspect. If you have to get somebody to come in and help you, uh, let's start, let's just even go with electricians. What's the story with electricians on this island? You know, I can get guys in to do small jobs relatively quick. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. You yeah. know, I get a guy here within a week to do add a add a fixture or do something. If I need a whole electrical panel change, you know, it might be a few weeks. Yeah, I was, I was four weeks out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but let's, let's talk cost. What's the cost? Well, is it sixty dollars an hour, seventy five dollars an hour. No, no, we're over hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah most of, most most of the trades are over a hundred. Plumbers yeah. are definitely over a hundred for yeah. sure. Okay, so a hundred dollars an hour for tradespeople, right? Start go with. higher, go 115. Yeah, okay. I've, 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 I've okay. seen all the way up to I've plumbers, I've seen all the way up to 140, 150 yeah. an hour. I mean, yeah. that's that's okay, and, and it goes <laughs> hours go pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, so if you're trying uh, to like uh, um, re plumb something or put in um, to just update the entire bathroom experience, then you're having to get a plumber in there, right? And and remember that that homeowners are not allowed to do plumbing or electrical work in Hawaii, it has to be done by a certified plumber. So, the idea of you're license, just gonna yeah. license, license certified plumber. Um, so the idea of you're just going to go, well, I'm just going to change out that whatever it is, that uh, that water heater, you are, unless you get a permit and you do the other things, you're, you're going to be in trouble. So yeah. you, you, yeah. you, can't. you don't want it to come back and bite you when you try and sell your house. Hey, as you guys know, we don't really have any sponsors, but we're the sponsors. So 
what are we sponsoring, Julie? Who sponsors so it? How do we get this done? we're sponsoring ourselves by offering matchmaking services for people who are thinking about moving and buying real estate here on the Big Island of Hawaii. We can put you with a real estate or mortgage professional, and we have amazing resource materials and groups that you can be involved in. So subscribe and also let us know if we can help you um, anywhere on the islands. That's right. Aloha. Aloha.